picture. Wait, 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 wait. Now, I'm guessing you've seen that play before. I'm guessing you know how it ends. You know that Cordell Stewart's going to throw the ball. Michael Westbrook's going to catch the ball. Colorado's going to win. Pandemonium. The big house falls silent. You already know that. But this game had so much more to it than just that final play. The lead up to the game, what happened during the game, everything down to that final play. There's a really good story there, lots of storylines to tell. And so we're gonna take a little bit today on backstory to talk a little bit about the miracle at Michigan. So this was a highly anticipated game. These were two top 10 teams. Colorado was ranked number seven. The week before this, they went and they played Wisconsin. Wisconsin was the defending Rose Bowl champions. It was supposed to be a good game. They were highly ranked. And Colorado beat them 55 to 17, just rolled them. So Colorado feeling a lot of excitement. And Colorado had been pretty good for a number of years. They won a number of Big 8 championships the previous years leading up to this. And they won the 1990 National Championship as well. So a really good program here in the early 90s. Michigan. They were also a pretty good program. They weren't in the national scene for the national championship the last few years leading up to this, but a number of Big Ten championships, super, super good history, um, one of the biggest brands in all of college football, and they were ranked number four. The week before this, they went to Notre Dame. They won in South Bend. Notre Dame had been the number three team, so Michigan was ready for a breakout season. And now if you think back to the early 90s, before the playoffs, before BCS, these non-conference games were super important. They were one maybe your only opportunity is to play a really big opponent because in the bowl game, you weren't guaranteed to play one of those top teams in the country. So here we go, two top teams. Maybe they were each going to win their conference. This was for a lot of importance outside of just one non-conference game. And so let's go a bit into the teams and kind of who the key players are. So for Colorado, we'll start with the coach, Bill McCartney. Bill McCartney had been pretty successful, as we mentioned, at Colorado. But before Colorado, he had a long career as an assistant at Michigan. So coming back to Ann Arbor, to the big house to play Michigan, was a pretty big deal for him. Next, what's got, we got Cordell Stewart, the quarterback. Cordell Stewart went on to be pretty well known in the NFL, played for a while with the Steelers, got the nickname Slash for some being a playing receiver and some stuff like that early in his career in the NFL. Well known, but in this place, he is our senior quarterback. The guy who catches the ball, Michael Westbrook, also pretty well known, had a, a decent NFL career. Um, catch, catches the ball in the end zone. And this was going to be a really big game for Michael Westbrook, too. He was from Detroit, so he had lots of family, lots of friends that were there to cheer him on. And so, pretty important game for him as well. Some other guys on the field, we had Blake Anderson. He's the guy who tips the ball up in the air, another receiver for Colorado. And then also, the infamous Ray Carruth was also a receiver for Colorado at this time. He's on the field. He doesn't play any part in this, but he's also one of their big receivers at that time. Went on to be convicted of murder after he got to the NFL. Um, that's a story for, for a whole different time. Um, but then one of the other very key players who probably doesn't get talked about very much, Rashawn Salam. Rashawn Salam won the Heisman this year, 1994 Heisman Trophy winner. All kinds of touchdowns, all kinds of yards throughout the season. But in this game, his role wasn't as big, and especially this play. Um, but what he did do is on that final play, there was some pressure coming in from the defense on Cordell Stewart and Salam got the block to push the defense inside so Stewart could roll out and get open to have time to throw that Hail Mary. So he had a key part. Later on, he actually went to say that, that play, that block, was the highlight of his playing career. He won the Heisman, all kinds of yards, all kinds of touchdowns, all kinds of highlight plays. But that block to set up that moment, you would say, was his highlight. So that's a pretty big deal. Now, on the Michigan side, there's not too many players that people know. Not a lot of players are involved. Now, the team as a whole, really good. Lots of big names um, all throughout the team. But on defense, right here at the place, the one guy, Ty Law. Ty Law went on to have a really good NFL career. He won a number of Super Bowls with the Patriots. But on this day, in this play, he was right there where the tip happened, right where the ball, right by Michael Westbrook. But he just couldn't come up with it this day. And as I mentioned, this was a really big game. Two top 10 teams, game of the week. On ABC, you have Keith Jackson, legendary Keith Jackson. Whoa, you have Bob Greasy, you have Lynn Swan as a sideline reporter. This was as big as it got in the 90s for a college football crew. And after this game played out, both teams would go on to have pretty good seasons. Colorado had a great season. They finished 11 and one. They're ranked number three. They won the Fiesta Bowl. Terrific season for them. Michigan was not quite as good. They finished 8-4, and four, ranked number 12, and they won the Holiday Bowl. So still two pretty good teams, went on to do pretty well. 
after this game. Okay, so now let's get a little bit into the game. We have a little bit over five minutes left in the game. Michigan had been controlling up to this point. They were winning by 12 points, but Colorado was on the move. They got down towards the end zone. Cordell Stewart's running to try and get into the end zone and fumbles the ball into the end zone. Michigan recovers, Michigan ball. So five minutes left, down 12, Michigan with the ball. Things were looking good for the home team. And then that's when the Colorado defense really started to step up. They got the ball back quickly. Colorado was able to go down and score this time to make it a 26-21 to game with just 2 minutes and 16 seconds left. They kicked the ball back to Michigan. Michigan has the ball. Again, Colorado was able to stop them. They used some timeouts, and Michigan's end up having to punt. They punt the ball to Colorado. But then Colorado's going to get the ball back with only 14 seconds left at their 15-yard line with zero timeouts. Things are not looking good for them. Okay, so Colorado's limited on options. At their own 15-yard line, no timeouts, 14 seconds. So what they first do is they get a play across the middle, throw the ball to Michael Westberg, move up the field a little bit, and the team has to run up, spike the ball. They get the ball spiked, six seconds left, and they still have 64 yards to go for a touchdown. So you have options at this point. So the only play left they have to run is their Hail Mary. And so they call it Rocket Left. And so something that's really interesting about this is in the first half, right before halftime, Colorado also tried a Hail Mary, called Rocket left, same play. But in that one, Michael Westbrook was the guy who was there to tip the ball, and Blake Anderson was the other receiver to be in the back to catch the tip. It didn't work out, pass fell incomplete. And so later on, assistant coach Rick Neuheisel said that at halftime, they decided to make an adjustment to this play, Rocket left. They switched it to have Blake Anderson become the tipper, and Michael Westbrook be the guy to catch in the back of the end zone. So I don't know how often a team has ever adjusted a Hail Mary play at halftime of a football game, but Colorado did it, and it worked out. Okay, so Colorado snaps the ball, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Stewart gets the ball, drops back for a little bit. He's got to buy some time because these receivers got to run a long way, 64 yards to get to the end zone. So he, gets, he sits there for a little bit. Some pressure comes from his left side, and that's where Slam comes in and helps the alignment push the defensive player more down to the inside. And Stewart rolls out to his left to get a couple of time. He gets ready, and the play goes down as a 64-yard touchdown pass. But Stewart threw the ball 72 yards in the air. That pass, in that moment, with what was on the line, probably one of the greatest passes to be ever thrown. 72 yards in the air, perfectly comes down at the one yard line where Blake Anderson's there with a couple of Michigan defenders, including Ty Law, and all their hands are up, kind of gets bumped, ball gets bumped up in the air, right, right to Michael Westbrook, who's about in the middle of the end zone to perfectly catch it and come down with the ball. Now, later on, Michael Westbrook would say that as he went to go jump, Ty Law, who was right there, kind of turned around and started pulling down on Michael Westbrook, so he couldn't jump very high. But as it turned out, the ball came right to him. So Michael Westbrook thought that maybe if Ty Law wouldn't have done that, he would have jumped too high and the ball would have came down and he wouldn't have actually caught the ball. So good for Colorado, I guess, that Ty Law was right there to kind of pull down on him a little bit. Michael Westbrook gets the ball, touchdown, pandemonium. Whoa, Colorado no. wins. Great game, absolutely fantastic finish between two great teams at the time. And so now that you know the backstory on the miracle at Michigan, let's have Keith take it away and show you the play. One more in six seconds. I think he just went over and says, just throw it up. The last pass is complete to Michael. So who we got here now? We've got Ruth that can fly. You got Westbrook, who leaper and big and strong and can run. I would think that James Kidd would be on the field as well. Probably Blake Anderson, who's made, uh, he's a tough guy. Six four. If I were the defense, I'd have a few more guys over there. Three wide outs at the top of the picture. Stewart with time. Let's it go. He's got three people down there. The ball's up in the air. Caught. Touchdown. Caught by Westbrook for a touchdown. Incredible. If you like that video make sure you hit the like button if you want to hear more backstories on plays players games teams seasons anything college football make sure you subscribe and check out our other videos